Hey everybody, welcome back. Got an Envoy video for you. In this particular one, we're going to be talking about the two newest symbiotes. One we talked about last week in Scream in the blog. I had a lot of information there. We'll get into some of the numbers in this video. And more importantly, Anti-Venom. This symbiote team, honestly, is something to get pretty excited about, I'd say. So if you're going to watch something, hopefully you made it this far. So I'm going to do a lot of the normal stuff that you see in these Envoy videos, going through their kits, uh, kind of showing some of the images that we got. But more than that, I'm going to dive into the stats uh, like I normally do through our character review. Uh, these are interpolated. And I'm also going to look at some of the T4s briefly from what I can tell in the roster kits that we got. So we're going to look at some of this stuff. Enjoy the ride. Check it out. Hopefully this gives you an idea of whether you should be saving any T4s for this team and any bio gear. And I'll give you a spoiler. You should. Bring me Wolverthor! I'm a part of a volunteer Fox Next Envoy program. I'm not an employee of Fox Next, nor am I an employee of Marvel. I do not receive any payments from either of these companies. The information that I was provided came directly from Fox Next through this Envoy program. However, any opinions, comments, or analysis of this information is strictly my own. All right, so we got some footage that uh, typically Scopely sends us on these characters. You can kind of see that, uh, you know, just shows the model, shows some of the ability. You can see that it's tier 13. Level 70, what else we got on here? All the T4s are maxed out. Seven yellow, four red. Goes through the stats here. Nothing, I'll go through the stats more in detail on my spreadsheet, which is a little bit more advantageous, honestly. But this is really more just kind of showing you what you got with the character. And then as it kind of goes through here, it goes through all the abilities. And I'll go through the kit specifically in a second where I'll put the text on the screen so you can see it and really kind of digest it. And I'll look at the symbiotes kind of as a team too, because this team is looking disgusting at this point, like in a good way. Uh, so that that's pretty, again, I'm just zooming through this. We'll do go through a lot of this very quickly here, and then I'll go through it in more detail later where we can kind of see the, uh, the specifics written down so you can really digest it. Same thing with Scream here. You get your little roster review, kind of turns it around. See the abilities on the left, same type of levels, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can see uh, a number of things coming to the game in here. Just, again, it gives you the idea of the stats. I interpolate these to get to my baselines. Goes through the abilities later, blah bitty blah bitty blah bitty. But it's, it's something really cool to see. It's, it's a really cool looking character. I really like, it's almost like she's got that mask on. It's kind of kind of cool. So anyway, that's what we got now. Let's look specifically, let's go to Anti-Venom's abilities because Screams I'll go through quickly because we've technically seen hers, but this one's got the numbers. All right, so first up, Anti-Venom. I'll put some text and some pictures in the screen as I'm kind of reading this stuff over to you guys. He's going to be Hero City Bio Support Symbiote Spider-Verse. Uh, there was some information on there you'll see crossed off. That was just some incorrect information we had to correct through the footage. No big deal. His basic Death Claw attacks primary target for 250% damage. It applies bleed and the opposite of two random positive effects on this character to the primary target. So think about that for a second. The way this is gonna work is attack primary target for 250% damage, it's applying bleed, and it's applying the opposite of two random positive effects that are actually on anti-venom. So you want to have, uh, when you use anti-venom's basic, you want positive effects on him. Anything that he's got, that way he puts the opposite on whoever he's attacking with that basic. Also with this basic is heal the most injured non-summoned ally for 10% of this character's math, max health plus clear heal block. Not sure exactly when that heal block gets cleared. Probably after the heal, which is kind of annoying, but given the fact that this is on a basic, I'm honestly not going to complain that much. It's like, okay, you're doing heals and clearing a heal block? All right, I'll take that. So it, uh, the attack also can't be dodged. So next up is a special. This could be your first or second turn ability. It depends what you really need here. Uh, first up is you clear heal, heal block from all of your allies. You also apply immunity to all allies. 
Th these are heal block and immunity to the symbiotes is something that's super critical. You always kind of need that with this team. Even though they can tend to go fast, this helps them heal to survive longer. So I love seeing that in there. You also heal all allies for 20% of this character's max health. Hopefully that's after the clear of the heal block. I'm hoping that based on how those bullets are set up, that's the way it goes. Anyway, but also on top of that, you revive a dead symbiote ally with 60% base health. Again, we'll get into T4s in a minute because there is some T4s built into that, but that's a Minerva res there. We talked about Scream last week. I was like, this is Minerva on set. Well, this is the other part of Minerva you needed. So remember last week, we were like, well, yeah, but you can't revive with Scream. Guess what? Anti-Venom's there to revive. So between the two of them, you got some Minerva kit in there. Gotta love that. If there is no dead symbiote allies, gain three ability energy. So the nice part about this is if you're going to use this, you're going to give yourself three energy if no one's dead. So it's not a waste to go ahead and use this early on. So if this you want to use first turn deck, well, I need to apply immunity because something's up, just do it. Because you're going to get three energy and then as soon as you get going quicker with you know all that speed up from the symbiotes, it's going to be kind of nice. So that's that's the special. Next up is the ultimate, um, and I didn't mention this with the special, but six out of six energy. So these are long cooldowns with this guy. The energy cost for the ultimate is seven out of seven. So that use of the special, make sure to use that at the right time. Don't, in my opinion, you don't want to use that necessarily when your ultimate's full. So you think think that through some, right? So that way you can get three to your ultimate and three to your special, depending on the situation. So the ultimate's deadly cure, uh, seven out of seven, like I mentioned, you are gaining the opposite of all negative effects excluding bleed on the primary target so depending what that primary target has you're gaining those positive effects again except bleed which would be great because it's more regen but you're not going to get that you attack that primary target for 300 percent damage and you have 100 percent drain which is awesome you gain two regen again there's t4s into that we'll get into that later you spread two random positive effects on self to non-symbiote allies and you spread all positive effects on self to symbiote allies. So you're seeing some, you know, some potential here for this guy to be on teams without symbiotes. But uh, right now, the nice part about that is you're going to spread all positive effects from the self to symbiote allies. Think Mr. Sinister there. That's a great, great ability. You got to love it. So he's putting negative effect or gaining positive effects from anybody who's got a negative effect, which are going to be out there because of the symbiotes, bring them to himself. You're attacking that primary target, getting drain, you're getting regen, and then you're spreading all your positive effects to your friends. That is sinister-esque, right? So normally you pull it from Mystique. This dude's just doing it himself. Like, forget you, Mystique. I got these abilities. I'm bringing them myself. I'm giving them my friends. The passive. It's called Wretched Healer. This one, on turn, clear one negative effect from the most injured ally that has a negative effect. If that ally is a symbiote, you are going to clear the one negative effect from all other symbiote allies with a negative effect. So clear one negative effect from all other symbiote allies with a negative effect. So if this dude, Antivenom's gonna look, who's my most injured ally? I need to clear a negative effect. If that person's a symbiote, you know what? I'm gonna clear a negative effect from all my symbiote friends. That's just passively. So when I was talking about clearing some stuff earlier, remember his passive is gonna do that automatically, which is friggin' phenomenal. Oh, and he also gains regen. So he's gaining regen every single turn. Awesome, awesome. This dude's gonna be regening all the time. And then just for kicks, when this character drops below 50% max health, gain evade. Okay, so now let's jump back to uh, his ultimate again. So if you get that ultimate back when he drops below 50%, spread two random positive effects to da, 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 non symbiote, spread all positive effects to self to symbiote allies. So you kind of want to time that ultimate for maybe the second use, depending if it's when you're talking raids or whatever. If he's below 50% and gets that evade, use that ultimate to get it to all his friends to help with some additional evade, some additional survivability. This guy, in my opinion, is everything this team needed. Really brings them together a lot. I love, love, love this dude's kit. I'm straight up like symbiotes i was wondering what they were gonna do with them i was hoping like they really can't make them worse like can they like this team's just gonna get much better the way they're bringing these guys in i cannot wait to t14 this dude along with scream and bring him into raids right 7.5 i could just symbiote Symb what's your raid team uh symbiotes what's your raid team uh symbiotes because they're just they're neg as long as they can apply those debuffs 
We'll see about on the last note of 7.5, but anyway, I'm loving this guy. So let's check out the T4s real quick before we jump into the stats. So I've got all of these T4s uh, on a giant spreadsheet that I track personally for myself. In this particular case, I wanted to see what they were. I normally don't do this in Envoy videos, but for this one, I'm kind of like, this Symbio team is pretty insane. So I kind of want to think about how many T4s I want to save for them. So I wanted to at least look at them, share with you. I'll still do my Punk Yeti stuff once this stuff is kind of out there and we get the chance to work together and kind of chat about it like in depth. Um, but right now we just, we haven't had that opportunity yet. So I'm just, I'm rushing out this video. We'll get our T4 stuff here in the near future. So Anti-Venom's basic. You get an additional 50% damage and you're applying plus one of the opposite random positive effects that I read to the primary target. And you're healing the most injured non-summoned ally for an additional 5% for that 15. Uh, the, cl the clear heal block thing I mentioned before uh, that plays in that. So, you know, I really like this basic. Normally I wouldn't. And then as far as how good it's ranked, uh, it's ranked 123. Not bad, you know, given that you're not really, I mean, there's so much on top of just the damage here. I, I don't have a problem with that. His special, the T4 upgrade is going to heal all eyes for an additional 5% of this character's max HP. It's pretty good, so it gets it up to 20%. The big part gain here is that you revive the dead symbiote ally for an additional 30% base HP. That's huge, honestly. That, that To me, that's a borderline essential. Uh, you know, 30% additional base HP that for symbiotes, that's might as well be full HP. The anti-venom ultimate T4 here, we've got 50% damage, additional 50% damage to the primary, plus you're gaining an additional regen. Um, and there's uh, this part I couldn't tell in the text, but there's some gain for your um, either all um, of the positive effects that you're spreading or to all the symbiote allies. I think either way, this is probably going to consider it essential. And what I mean by that is when he's spreading all the positive effects or the positive effects, the T4 is not very clear in is it you're spreading all the positive effects or are you spreading to all the allies? I couldn't see in the text where that changed so there's some gain of all somewhere it could be both of them either way i think whether it's all the symbiotes or all the positive effects i think it's probably going to consider it as an essential type upgrade anti-venom's passive here on turn one clear one negative effect for da, da, da. if that ally is a symbiote then clear one negative effect from all other symbiote allies and that part is another one of those alls before this it's you clear one negative effect from the next two most injured. So in this case, the T4 gives you a clearing of a negative effect from all your symbiote, ally, symbiote allies as opposed to just two to three of them. So here, again, I'm probably considering this essential because this is a passive and I want to clear negative effects from all of my symbiotes as much as I can. I love this. I'm probably T4 in that. So having said that, you know, I'm kind of listing almost all four of these. That by itself is 840 T4s. Maybe you leave off the basic. Okay, fine. That's still 660 T4s. Look, this team is going to be a heavy T4 investment. So anyway, that's that. Let's go check out the stats for this guy, and then we'll come back to Scream. Okay, it is giant spreadsheet time. I always rank all of the new characters on this giant spreadsheet. I put all the stats in here. It ranks the stats per each category. And then I've got an average rank off to the side that you can see uh, so that I kind of sort them in that average rank so that I can just see statistically where these folks rank up. Uh, and I just get a feel for it. Again, this doesn't include, you know, every single uh, passive buff that a character might have in T4s. It's specifically level 75, seven yellows, four reds, T14, 25% Stark tech and passive level four per msf.gg. Now, typically with these new Envoy stuff, you gotta do some interpolation because msf.gg doesn't have it yet. So we look at the stats we get, interpolate it, and then go from there. So take it with a grain of salt, but it should get you pretty close. So we're looking for, first here, we are looking for our guy Anti-Venom, right? And it's like, okay, well, pretty disappointing stat-wise, honestly. 112, I was kinda like, not loving that, not loving that, but let's see, you know, HP matters, focus matters. Let's see how that goes. So we've got health at 29. That's great given uh, you want a lot of HP or you want a high HP so that percent heals higher. Like seeing that damage, that's eh, probably fine, 106. So I'm not mad about that low damage. Armor comes ranked at 70th. Okay, we could use it higher so he survives. But, you know, it's, it's solid enough. Again, this team should be healing itself quite often, so I'm not really super worried about that. Now, uh, the focus. 
the focus, the focus, the focus. This is god awful. So I do not like this. I don't like this at all. Um, if he's finding himself resisted a lot, uh, unable to flip things, um, that's going to be extremely disappointing given that's the point of his kit. His resistance is also pretty bad at 125. Kind of like, oh, I don't love that. Don't love that. But so those two, those two are ringing some bells for me that I don't like. I would have liked to have seen those a lot higher. The speed ranked at 32nd is fantastic. But the, yeah, the resistance and the focus, really the focus comes in at like around 84. I mean, this is Kree Cyborg, Yandu, Hulk territory, Spider-Man, Merc Ragguard. Stat wise, this is really, really bad. I don't, I shouldn't say really bad. It's just, I don't like, I was really disappointed when I saw this. So I'm hoping that, you know, either some of the interpolation I did was inaccurate or something, but I hope that this guy's gonna end up being higher than this. I just, I don't like it. So that's the stats uh, as far as where he's gonna shake out. All right, Scream, again, we had most of this stuff in the blog, so I'm gonna go through this much quicker. Uh, villain, City, Bio, Controller, Symbiote, Spider-Verse, Metamorphosis, which is probably some event campaign situation. Her basic called Symbiote Swipes, it's going to be attack primary target for 250% damage. She's applying bleed, clearing positive effects, chaining, more damage, more bleed, more cause of po clearing positive effects, and then obviously it can go to stealth targets. That's the big winner there. You got to love that. First ability that you're likely going to use here is this the special called Splitting Hairs. Uh, it costs four energy, so it's generally low. That's the one thing this team's kind of missing is a battery, uh, and only Anti-Venom's doing that for himself. But the uh, special is a attack primary target for 280% damage, clearing two positive effects, applying offense down, adjacent to two tar, uh, chaining to two adjacent targets, more damage, 240%, clearing two positive effects, applying offense down, and it's happening to stealth. So again, that's all the stuff we talked about the other day. Nothing too special there other than the percentages. And we'll get through the T4s again in a second so you guys can see exactly where that's going to come out. Ultimate is a hair trigger. Uh, I believe the way this works is typically it's turn two because turn one, you get your five out of six. And then when it comes to turn two, she's got her six out of six. Attack primary target with 300% damage. You're playing slow for two turns. Uh, important to know that for T4. Uh, disrupt for one turn. And again, she's attacking primary or attacking adjacent targets for 250% damage. Also applying slow for two turns and disrupted for one. She's reducing speed bar by 30% and the attack cannot be blocked, which is fantastic. Gotta love that, and I like the speed bar reduction. Her passive symbiotic attachment on death of any character, heal all symbiote allies for 10% of this character's max, max health, and apply speed up for two turns. So this is the part where it's like when you're worried about anybody dying, you want this speed up part is great. You love this, so anytime anybody dies, she's putting speed up on um, all symbiote allies, so love that. If this character has three or more symbiote allies, apply negative 30% resistance to all enemies. That's important for some of that focus issue that you might have with anti-venom. So hopefully this part really helps kind of mend that gap. So hopefully he's landing it because of this 30% resistance reduction to all enemy or to all enemies. So now let's look at the T4s. All right, her basic, it's a additional 50% damage to primary and secondary. So 250 and 200. Um, plus you're now applying bleed to the secondary targets. So for the T4, you get 50% extra damage and bleeds the secondary targets. That's actually really good. Um, you really like to get more, uh, debuffs with this team. If you, oh man, I, I, I normally wouldn't call something like this essential, but you know, let's look at the damage rank here. It's ranked 59th. That's really good on a basic. I'm probably going to consider that essential because you want more bleeds on more of your enemies. Scream special, this is 40% additional damage to primary and secondary targets. You're clearing an additional positive effect on the primary and secondary targets. So the T4 gains that extra positive effect you're clearing. So two instead of one and an additional 40% damage. Not too bad. And then that one comes ranked at 110. So the damage, not great there, but the positive effect clear, that's probably why you're gonna wanna end up doing this. Do I wanna call it essential? Probably not, but it's still darn good. Ultimate, it's an additional 50% damage to primary and secondary targets, the 300 and the 250. You're applying slow for an additional turn here. That's probably the winner on this T4. Again, is it essential? With a team like Symbiotes, I might argue that it is because you, the more you slow the enemy down, 
the more you get the chance to go and spread more debuffs, and they just don't go. When you speed up, they slow down, you spread more debuffs. It's what you want. So uh, the damage rank there for her ultimate comes in at 60th. That's darn good. So the damage by itself, that's that's really, really solid. You gotta, gotta kind of love that. Uh, the pass of the last one, on death of any character, heal all symbiotes allies for an additional 5% of this character's max health. So instead of a uh, a 5% heal, you get a 10% heal. And that's death of any character. Again, I, I'm i going to argue that you might need the T4s here because, you know, that 5% might not seem like a lot, but when you're doing raids, you want the you want that healing happening. I mean, that's the Minerva heal you're getting, but it's, you're getting it for 10% across your entire team. So, I mean, you can almost argue, again, that you need all T4s. Or, that's another 840. So that's, I mean, if I'm, if I'm T4 and all... Um, Anti-Venom and Scream, that's 1,680 T4s that you need. Okay, so plan accordingly. It's going to be a buttload of T4s for these for these two coming to the game. I highly recommend you using it based on what I'm seeing on paper right now because if this team is a key raid team, which I think it's going to be, you're going to want to have them kicking butt all the way through. I am pretty stoked about having these guys on my squad. All right, and last but not least for Scream, we're going to check out her stats. All right, so I already explained how this spreadsheet works earlier, but again, somewhat disappointed here with the 101st ranking on the overall stat. Uh, normally, I like to see newer characters much higher than that. She ranks in about 80th uh, as far as the average ranks. She ranks in 101 across the board. A little bit higher than Anti-Venom, but let's see again. She's a damage dealer, so how does she rank there? Uh, first up, her health. She ranks 93rd. Don't love that, but, you know, given that, you know, some of her abilities, again, it, working with all of the other symbiotes, it's really looking at the collective whole. I'm not super upset about that. The damage, which is what I wanted, is super highly ranked at 11. Uh, she's coming in at 18, 20, uh, 213 as far as the base damage there at that, uh, that baseline that I've created. The armor, again, around 70th. It's the same as Anti-Venom. Not bad. You want her to stick around. Focus, again, pretty low. Uh, it's the same as Anti-Venom. I don't love that. If the, her resistance isn't helping her get this land these attacks, these characters don't serve a point, honestly. If these things are getting resisted, it is going to be the most disappointing thing in the world, okay? This is the concern I have with her and Anti-Venom. Is, is her 30% resistance reduction enough to be able to land um, and make up for this poor focus. It needs to be, otherwise these characters are gonna fall flat on their face. Maybe not on their face, but they're not gonna be anywhere near as good as they should be. Uh, resistance, again, 146, not great there. A little bit worse than Anti-Venom. The speed, I love it. It's at 120, rank 17. And like I mentioned, the overall average rank across the board is 80. But, um, you know, again, outside of the focus, you wanted damage, you wanted HP, not great. You want speed always, which is fantastic. So the health could have been higher and the focus could have been a lot higher. Fingers crossed with the 30% resist reduction. So the speed part of this uh, team, I want to kind of have this in this conversation. Uh, I've sorted my spreadsheet here by speed and I've listed Carnage. You've got going first at 126. Then you've got Symbio Spider-Man at 121. And you've got Scream doing more damage, negative effects at 120. Then you've got Anti-Venom coming in at 116. And then obviously Venom's a little bit slower, but he's going to be sped up because of some of this negative effects situation, and he's down there at 93. So these guys are gonna be going pretty early. I mean, Scream, the only people going before Scream, and in a lot of this, is she's, uh, her speed is 120. So this is a dice roll here, but there's not a whole lot of characters going before three of the symbiotes, between Scream, Carnage, and Symbiote Spider-Man. I mean, what, there's only 16 characters ahead of Scream. You know, there's only 15 characters ahead of Symbiote Spider-Man. And there's only, you know, eight characters ahead of Carnage. So this team is going to be fast. And then when you're going to be adding any, you know, Carnage uh, passive buffs here, slows, this is going to get silly really quick. So I wanted to cover this part just a little bit, even though this is more of a character, a specific character uh, Envoy release. It, this These characters are about the Symbiotes as a team. So that's what I got. That's the new symbiotes. We've been waiting for these guys forever. I'm still, even though I've got some concerns about the focus, I'm still really excited about these guys. I'm still hoping to get them at high levels so that I can get Ultimus 7 raids much easier. 
at least at the 7.5 level. I'm sick of healing, I'm sick of RNG, I'm sick of banging my head against the Fury boss mode, oh brother, all that type of stuff. I'm actually very curious to see how these guys do against a no brother type node where it's kind of like, okay, are these guys gonna be able to survive long enough and land some negative effects to be able to get through that? If not, that's gonna be a super, super bummer, but we'll see. So I love it. I, I, let me know what you guys think. There's a link to the uh, Discord in the description below. I'd love to hear if you guys are hyped for these guys. Is there something that I missed about them being better than I'm saying, worse than I'm saying? I don't know, what do you think? Hammer down the like button, click the notification bell, subscription button, all the widgets, gadgets, share with your alliance mates. I'd love to hear what you guys think about these guys. I'm stoked for right now until somebody proves otherwise to me. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.